Hello and welcome to this SimScale video tutorial where I will be showing you how to set up a CFD simulation for centrifugal pump analysis. First, let's import our model into this project by clicking the small button next to the geometry tree header on our left hand side panel. Next, we will be using the button or the drag and drop feature to load our CAD file. After this, press the upload button. After a few seconds, our model is uploaded to the platform and we can visualize it in the interface. SimScale offers a variety of tools to prepare our geometry for the simulation. In our case, we're going to use a scaling factor. Select the option scaling, enter the scaling factor, then press start. Once our model is ready, we can click the Create Simulation button and select the Incompressible Analysis. We can see that our geometry is composed of three different bodies. One represents the fluid in the cavity, the other one represents the impeller solid body, and the last one is the rotating zone uh, surrounding the impeller. The first stage of our simulation setup is the meshing of our model in order to capture its features and topology in a discretized manner. Let's start with defining a background mesh box, which is going to dictate the overall dimensions of our mesh. This box should be fully containing our model. We are then going to specify a point within our fluid cavity body to indicate where the fluid should be located. We are also creating a cylinder geometry primitive that we are going to use as a region in one of our mesh refinement. The type of mesh we are selecting here is hex dominant parametric, and we are choosing a resolution of 10 divisions for the background mesh box that we previously created. The only other parameter that we are modifying here is the number of processor used for the meshing operation. Let's set it to 32 for a case of this size and complexity. In order to capture smaller details such as shorter edges and smaller surfaces, we are going to create different mesh refinements, including surface, region, feature and inflate boundary layers refinement. Using the topological entity set that we can define clicking on the geometry tree item, we can set a number of surface and volume refinement levels depending on the size of the entities we have in this set. You can see that I have set up different surface refinements corresponding to different surface sizes. One important refinement is a surface refinement that will create a cell zone. This will allow our meshing algorithm to generate two mesh zones one being the rotating zone that corresponds to the rotating area around our impeller. The other one is the stationary uh, fluid zone. You can see that I have set up different uh, other uh, refinements for a mesh, uh, one being the region refinement using a cylinder uh, that we have previously created in our geometry primitive. Uh, other refinements include feature refinement and inflate boundary layer refinement in order to capture uh, the viscous boundary layers around the walls of our model. So now let's have a look at our mesh. Uh, we can visually inspect it. We can um, highlight uh, different areas and hide surfaces, hide zones as well and see uh, smaller areas and see how well we've captured our topology. Also, the mesh generated comes with a report showing us uh, the number of faces and the number of nodes, uh, as well as um, an indication on the quality of the element produced. So once the mesh has been generated, we can continue with defining uh, the material for our simulation. Uh, in this case, we're going to use water on the two uh, volume of uh, cells that we've created. Uh, there's no need to uh, input any initial conditions in our case. 
For the boundary conditions, we're going to assign at the inlet a volumetric uh, flow rate of uh, 0 0.12 meter cube per second. At the outlet, we'll be assigning a fixed value for pressure outlet of 0 pascals. Every other wall in our uh, simulation will be assigned a no-slip wall condition. Uh, for the advanced concept, we'll be assigning a rotating zone at 157.08 radians per second using the rotating zone of the mesh. For the numerics, uh, we'll be using smooth solvers for uh, every uh, entity uh, that uh, the calculation is going to go through. So that is fairly straightforward and a very uh, robust kind of option. Our simulation controls allow us to define an end time, a number of processors, and a maximum runtime for uh, our runs. SimScale allows us to uh, monitor uh, a few uh, quantities uh, throughout the run. So this is going to be our forces and moments over uh, the set of uh, surfaces that constitute the impeller. Also, we're going to monitor uh, the area average at the inlet and outlet, as well as the flow rate at the inlet and outlet. We can have a look at our first run that took approximately uh, 300 minutes to complete and set up a new run, for instance, by clicking the plus button. So now let's dive in to our results uh, by clicking solution fields. Um, we can uh, populate a number of um, visual representation of our uh, different quantities. This includes uh, velocity contours showing uh, the distribution of uh, velocities uh, throughout our domain. Uh, also, um, with an overlay uh, of uh, the velocity vectors. This indicates the direction of the flow and any potential areas uh, for higher speeds or recirculations. Uh, we can also populate pressure contours in different direction and to analyze uh, different quantities such as the pressure drop or um, any other variables like uh, cavitations or areas of uh, really low pressures. Uh, in terms of uh, particle traces, we can analyze uh, how fast the, f the fluid is uh, moving inside our cavity and also uh, identify areas uh, where the fluid is re also recirculating, uh, where there is higher speeds as well, and uh, have a nice uh, idea of how much and how well uh, the fluid develops inside the cavity. Uh, let's have a look at um, our force and moments plus where we can visualize uh, uh, what we have set up before in terms of uh, forces and moments uh, over the set of surface that constitute uh, our impeller. We can uh, actually uh, quantitatively uh, assess the, uh, the torque value and the force. We can also check different values uh, for our uh, area controls for the average and flow rate and see uh, that we actually have uh, at our outlet uh, the same amount of flow rate, obviously, that uh, at our inlet here.